Welcome Friday Focus, uh, December 30th. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, so we're going to talk about uh, the new uh, implants. We're starting a new implant uh, uh, concept at uh, Allure. And it's been based on kind of a transition and a, you know, for me, an experience of how things have gotten better and what we did in the past maybe was not what we should be doing in the future. And we can also look at things we've done in other surgical procedures that we've innovated and apply that to breast augmentation. And when women are thinking about breast augmentation, the ones that come in right now, they're looking for that little bit more of a fake look. Uh, they're willing to undergo surgery and willing to undergo sedation and downtime associated with it. But there's a lot of women that that's not really in the cards for them. They can't really take time off work and they don't want to be knocked out and they don't really like that artificial look. So let's talk about what's happened and what we can offer them. So this is the implant that we use since 2006. It's called the Classic uh, Silicone Implant. And the Classic Implant was, uh, has a silicone uh, skin and it's got a silicone gel on the inside that's supposed to stick together. So if you were to cut it, it kind of runs out a little bit, but not real fast. But it's not real liquidy, it's just sort of goopy. And because of the nature of the silicone implant, when you put it inside the body, it gets kind of scrunched and it kind of collapses. And they tried making shaped implants with this because people want more volume on the bottom, but they don't work because they just deform, they distort. So the solution for that was we would put it inside the body and underneath the muscle. And when the muscle, the muscle pec muscle was right here, so it goes wide down here and it gets narrow towards the shoulder. The pec muscle just brings your arm forward. So it attaches here, gets wider towards the center of your chest. So it would sit on top of here, and what it would do is it push down the top of the implant and bulge out the bottom. So now we have a nice shaped implant. Uh, and by doing that, it also got rid of the sprinkling. So the implants wrinkle on the top, but when you put the muscle underneath it, on top of it, it kind of pushes it out. So it turned it into a teardrop form, and it was underneath the muscle, and that, that worked. People were happy with it. But inherently, patients would have concerns about that, you know, underneath the muscle, there's more pain and downtime with it. A little more complications in terms of getting what we call a double bubble, where you can see the old bottom of the breast. And they'd move, when, you, when you work out, these things would move around because underneath your muscle. And that was undesirable, but it was acceptable. So women were doing the surgery because they accepted it. Well, then uh, the company came out with the gummy bear implants about a year ago or so. So anything in the past year, this is what we've been using. And there's new versions. The one we're we'll talking about now are actually the most advanced version. just came out last month. But the first gummy bear implants were simply, they would wrinkle less than this one. Okay, it still wrinkles, but it wrinkled less. They put a bit, little bit more, the gel was a little bit thicker and a little bit more in it so it wouldn't wrinkle as much. So this one's really wrinkled, this one wrinkled less. So we could put it on top of the muscle, only in selected people who had a lot of breast tissue. Usually about 90% of the time these still had to go underneath the muscle to get rid of the wrinkling, because wrinkling on top would be maybe unacceptable. Then they came out with a, in October, a implant that did not distort. Okay, they made it so it held its form, so it's round, and it holds its form. So you can put this one, on, this was designed to go on top of the muscle, and it was superior to the one that would kind of collapse. This would collapse. This one keeps the shape, even on top of the muscle. So it can go on top of the muscle. Well, there's still an inherent issue where the nipple is designed to go right in the center. In fact, there's a little circle right here that goes down, and it goes exactly underneath the nipple, so the nipple is right here. So we have to lower the breast, because a woman's breast might have a nipple here, and the bottom of the breast might be sitting right here. So this has to be brought down a little bit. So they overcame that with a new implant that's shaped, and it's shaped like a teardrop. Okay, put this one on top, the muscle looks very round on top, kind of fake. This one's shaped like a teardrop, shaped like a natural breast. And also the nipple, instead of going in the middle, goes right down here. So the implant sits higher. So this implant would sit here on a woman, and this one would sit here. Okay, and women obviously want higher breasts, not lower breasts. So this has got that desirable nature. The other thing they did is they made it so that it would hold its form. It does not crinkle like the original ones did. Okay, this would crinkle, and this keeps its form. The other thing they did, you see it's got a different color. It's got a coating, and this coating is designed to make it not get as much of a capsule contraction, keep it softer, because your body makes a scar around the implant after you put it in. So this would keep that from happening or reduce the rate substantially. And the reason they didn't put the coating on these implants is it made them wrinkle even more. But this one implant does not wrinkle, so we can put the coating on it that's kind of the anti-capsule coating. So we have the advantage of putting an implant in higher, having a more natural shape, having one that can look like a natural breast, and having one that can be done on top of the muscle. Well, how much of a change is it? Actually, it's a huge change because we realize that, you know, when we do the vein procedure, uh, we 
tumescent, use a tumescent anesthetic, which is what numbs them up, and we do it under ultrasound. We get the tumescent per perfect, and we laser their vein. Well, most people use sedation. They put these people to sleep to get their veins treated. Most places, you don't, you've never seen it here, because we learned how to do this early. I was really the first guy in the, in the state doing this. But I started using local anesthetic, really perfectly placed around the vein, and treated people. And my colleagues, when they come out to visit, they're shocked we're doing this on awake patients, because they can't get the numbing as perfect, so they don't use ultrasound and they get places that hurt, so they put the patients to sleep. We've never had to put anybody to sleep because it does not hurt. So I thought, what about applying what I've learned in the veins, which very few people are doing, what about applying that to the breast? So what we did is I had, to, with the help of some of our, of our, of our ladies at Allure, I did some, uh, I got some volunteers, and I practiced getting perfect tumescent underneath the breast with ultrasound. And if you ever watch a vein procedure, you look at that the vein we're treating, and we put the anesthetic in there, and you see the tissues peeling away from the vein, and you know you got perfect to mess it, they're not going to feel a thing. And I also found that in a woman, the most numb part of her body that you won't feel a needle pick is right below the breast. So obviously your nipple has the most sensation, that'd be a horrible place to stick a needle, but right down here you don't feel much. So on trial and error, I was able to find if I put a little, a little bit of lidocaine right here, numb the skin up, then I can numb the entire breast up precisely and perfectly under ultrasound. Not only that, I could use the ultrasound to see the muscle and the ribs and the tissues and the lung, of course, you don't want to poke into the lung, and I can see the breast tissue, and I can lay a bead of anesthetic right in that place between the muscle and the breast and sort of pull the breast right off the muscle painlessly. You don't feel it. Then during surgery, I make an incision without a knife, I use a little radio frequency device because it gives less of a scar, and because I had pre-tunneled that space with the anesthetic under ultrasound precisely, instead of cauterizing the tissue off, which is how almost everybody does it. Cautery, when you burn it off, it actually hurts a lot afterwards, like when in recovery, you know they're numb during procedure. I was able to take it and use a blunt tool to separate the breast away and make a perfectly sized pocket. And with this implant, you want to make the so pocket exactly the shape or it might turn. So I make it the exact shape of this implant and then we slip the implant in. The other thing you do that's really kind of fun is that uh, the patient's awake. They feel nothing and I can put a sizer in before the implant because the sizers are cheaper, it costs like 30 bucks or something. We put a sizer in the size we were thinking, maybe two different sizers, and I can sit the lady up and she can look at them in a mirror and make a final decision with her surgeon, is this the right size for me? Get rid of that anxiety of that, is it gonna be too big or too small? We can change it at that time. We don't open the implants up until we've sit her up and let her look at it. After the implant goes in, we do some suturing of the wound. Uh, it does have to go in down here, at least for right now. Maybe later on I'll be doing it differently. That's the only way they've been done so far. And the patient is awake the whole time, and then she can go back to her normal activities. It might not be working that day. We're going to have some of our staff tell me how they feel about working right afterwards. Uh, but I know you can do like shopping and take care of your family or any time off work. What this does is it opens a whole new uh, group of women that might want to be considering breast surgery. And sometimes when I'm talking to the doctors about this, they're saying, well, patients are okay with being knocked out. Yeah, the patients who are coming in now know they're getting knocked out, so they're okay with it. And they know they're going to look fake, and they're okay with it. And they got referred by their girlfriend who's got like a roundish breast, and they're okay with it. But a lot of women who don't. You know, the riskiest part of surgery is obviously the sedation. We do extremely safe sedation, but that scares people. I know when I had a surgery, I was more afraid of the sedation than the surgery. It's afraid. It's just a natural thing, not having control. Okay, we don't like having control. So we have, first off the sedation. Now we cur certainly can do the surgery the same way and, and sedate them, but it is not necessary, so there have to be somebody that's like, uh, I, I don't even know why, because if anything, I would just give them like a shot of Versed so they're relaxed. There, there would be no reason to sedate for the surgery. I only sedate them if they're putting under the muscle. Because once it's perfectly numb, and if the numbing doesn't hurt, why would you put somebody in the risk of sedation? So we might give them like oral medicine, or even a shot of a mild sedative, but I would not use IV sedation, or certainly never general anesthesia. So what about the sedation fear? Done, okay? What about the fake look? Well, what makes it look fake? Well, it used to be putting on the top of the muscle looks fake because you see the roundness. Now we have an implant that is tapered and does not look fake. So we have fake. We can get rid of that. Maybe not to go too big. Uh, capsule contracture. That's where one breast gets hard and it gets deformed. These don't encapsulate, they encapsulate less than one third as much as regular round implant. What about movement? The old ones would move when you flex your muscle. Gone, okay, it's on top of the muscle. Uh, 
what about what we call the double bubble? And if you work in the surgery, you know that when we do these implants here, we have to lower the breast, and occasionally the woman's got a crease across the bottom of the breast, we have to do a surgery to fix it. So the bubbles are gone. So the problems that we would encounter in a regular round implant have, for the most part, been solved. Now, surgery is still surgery, and there's, there's inherent risks with it. However, we're always trying to make it safer and better. And you know, sedation is something that I really like to get rid of for, for surgery I don't need it for. Uh, this is something that somebody can come and get same-day surgery if they wanted to. They can see the size of their implants and make that decision. They have not lost control with sedation. They can have oral sedation if they want to, just be more relaxed. Uh, they can pick the implants live and they can go live their life afterwards. They don't have to lay in bed for two days. They're not going to be a sore. We're not using cautery because I have a bloodless plane, so there's no bleeding, and they have much less pain afterwards. Okay, Tia's here with us, and uh, you had surgery when, Tia? Um, Friday, last week. Okay, so uh, tell me kind of about your experience and your concerns. And um, I mean, I had a really good experience. I wasn't really afraid of anything going into it, um, but I had no pain at all when I had the surgery done during the surgery. Um, after I left, I had a little bit of discomfort, um, a little aching, but nothing that wasn't tolerable. Did you take anything for it? Um, I took some of the Celebrex. The Celebrex didn't work too well, but um, I took Tylenol, which worked the best out of anything. Okay. And you went shopping that night, but you kind of could feel it. <laughs> yeah, I went uh, to Target after to go finish my Christmas shopping. And um, yeah, I felt a little discomfort after that. Yeah. So then I went home, but Saturday I was fine. Great. So like if we do the surgery under the muscle, you ain't going to Target that night. That's just no. reality. So this was, uh, Tia had those shaped implants put in, and she's a good candidate for it. And uh, this was you know, this is the first shaped implant put in under totally local anesthetic, probably the first totally local anesthetic implant done in the first place, and first one done in the country. So you must really trust me. I do. I did trust them a lot, okay, well, honestly. <laughs> thank you. I did. So uh, uh, this is the new paradigm that the, uh, the, you know, the Tia's experience, and she helped me out, and some other staff helped me out to learn how to perfect this. This is the way breast augmentation is going to happen. More natural look, less capsule contracture, less complications, less reoperation rate. You can choose. You got to sit up and look at the implants, and it was like right, right size. Yeah, it was awesome. And uh, you're awake, and you have no sedation risk. You don't lose control, and you feel way less pain. So that's it. Thank you very much. Thank you.